We have not gotten the full picture on what it really is to be a freelancer or a solo entrepreneur, a solopreneur. So let's get into it. I'm going to give you all the truth. Hello, everybody. My name is Michelle Patterson, and I am the founder of Angel Souls, which is not just a YouTube channel, but a spiritual services, or you might see it as a spiritual coaching kind of business. And I have been at this for nearly a decade and i'm sure all of you have seen those ads where people are like are you making less than ten thousand dollars a month this is all you gotta do to have passive income have you seen this mansion behind me but <laughs> the the get rich quick schemes obviously they've never been a good idea i am a real freelancer a solopreneur and i'm going to tell you exactly what this entails now, first and foremost, everyone's going to have a different experience. What I'm offering here is what I have been through in case it's helpful for you, whether you're already in business and you just wanna hear what other people are going through, or if you're thinking about becoming a freelancer, what are you really going to have to be prepared for? That's what we're gonna go through here. Now, I do need to set up here that I am a more creative type person. So somebody who has a business degree and they're striking out on their own as a freelancer, in a completely different field, I imagine you're gonna have a very different experience than someone who's creative and doesn't have that background. But just hang with me, you'll still get something out of this video. First and foremost, you'll have freedom. Uh, yeah, if you can afford it, <laughs> okay? Listen, the one thing I like about being a freelancer, yes, I make my own hours. So I can choose any 14 hours out of the day anytime I want, <laughs> but I'm still working 14 hour days, sometimes 16 hour days. It's common, six days a week, seven days a week. And especially if you have a freelance job or an entrepreneurial ship that involves social media, which of course you do in this day and age, of course you do. So even after you've done all the stuff we're gonna go into, you still have to interact on your social media. Now, some people may come into starting their own business with some money, okay? Maybe they're at an advantage for having some money. But a lot of people who, especially through everything we've been through in the past couple of years, when they're coming out, they're trying to find, again, that freedom, some growth, potential, living their potential, and trying to find happiness. So they may not be coming in, or you may not be coming in with a lot of money. And so you can't just hire somebody. That is the funniest thing I ever heard. Somebody said, well, why don't you just hire someone to edit your videos? Oh, is that, is that what I gotta do? Just throw money at it? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming along in your infinite wisdom. But that is, you know, again, that's a reality point. You may come in and have to do everything on your own. So the freedom part, yes, you get to decide what days you work, what hours, but at some point, you're gonna be putting in the work. Over nearly a decade, I have worked lawyer's hours and gotten paid like a school teacher. It's tough out here, okay? So just be aware of that. Freedom isn't exactly what <laughs> everyone's making it out to be. Going right into the next point, everything is on your shoulders. Now I came out of the corporate world. I had a very specific situation. I was in a very toxic, I would call it abusive, dynamic, and I had to get out of there. So I started my own business and it was a little rough having to do everything on my own. Again, I didn't have the money to hire people. So what does that really look like? Well, you have computer problems. There's no IT department to call. You can't call an HR department when clients are <laughs> being over the top. Um, you know, just stuff like that. You don't have the legal department to call and see, hey, am I in alignment? Am I in compliance with copyright law? Uh, that sort of thing. And good luck if you can afford an accountant right away. So you're gonna have to know tax law and you're going to have to keep on top of privacy laws. How do you do that as a freelancer? Well, you can try certain freelancer organizations, but I have never found them to be very helpful. The stuff that has caught me by surprise and things will catch you by surprise, okay? <laughs> we'll go into a couple of examples here, but the stuff that I needed to know, it wasn't posted there. So I started to follow small business association uh, sites and also following 
privacy laws, you know, the sites that handle that. I have to follow the tax compliance laws. Again, nobody's going to spell it out for you. You have to really keep an eye on what's changing. So and even if you have an accountant, an accountant, they're not going to necessarily call you up and say, oh, hey, digital stuff is now subject to, to sales tax. So that subscription service you have, you have to you know, charge sales tax on that. Maybe that site will do it for you. Like I understand Patreon takes care of that for you, but a thing like Substack doesn't. And you need a license in some states to collect the sales tax. There's a lot that's gonna hit you, <laughs> okay? And it's like, where did that come from? Uh, I remember I, ha I got an email uh, notification. It was like a, an a email marketing. And it was from a colleague of mine. And I was like, it was all about the new updated, you know, in accordance to this and that. And, that. and she had this whole thing. And I reached out to her. I'm like, what the heck is this? She's like, I just found out about this. She heard it from somebody else. Mad scramble to have to get this statement drawn up, trying to find a site that could help you with that. Um, that's the other thing too. You want assets for, you know, like let's say you do YouTube. You want assets for your video. You need to know copyright. You want to use music. You got to know copyright. Um, you know, again, if you don't come from like a business background, a digital marketing background, or in my case, I had to learn how to use a camera, how to use lights, sound, how do I edit? You know, I had to learn all of that. Bookkeeping, right? I did my own taxes for the longest. Why? Previously, I had hired two accountants and both of them had made mistakes. So I, I did it on my own for a while. It's a lot. It's a lot. Again, some people, especially if you're in the business arena, uh, it's going to be a different experience for you. So let's just, at this point of the video, talk about what areas are going to be kind of even maybe, dare I say, recession proof. Medical, well, some business people like business consulting, maybe, maybe you might say, oh, are you kidding? No, <laughs> but medical, um, accountants, you know, everyone's gonna be still doing their taxes insurance, you know, um, and in this area, military, you know, there's still need for all of those things. But if you're a creative person, I'm a spiritual practitioner and a writer. <sighs> Most of us start businesses because we want to, we're not necessarily business people, but because we want to make money off of our art <laughs> and, and being true to what we can offer. Right. But that doesn't always work out so well. I can tell you that being a freelancer, my writing got put on the back burner. And I was working on it here and there, but you know, once you get up and you're filming, you first you got your prep, you're filming, you're editing, you're doing, in my case, personal readings. Um, there for a while I was doing courses. I've been doing live events. I don't have the energy to sit down and try to like think and play out a story, right? <laughs> so, so there is that, and that is something, I mean, that's just for some people, the reality of it. There's gonna be a lot on your shoulders. The next thing to be aware of, and this is very important, please take this seriously, isolation. I welcomed that isolation at first. As a matter of fact, I always joked, I'm like, I am so peopled out. I am so glad to be out of the office <laughs> because I was, I was in a very toxic environment and that isolation was good for me at first. And then it started to get very lonely and it started to get a little depressing and I was working so hard, I didn't have a social life anymore. And if I wanted a vacation, still, if I want a vacation, I have to work for it. I have to make sure I do a ton of batch filming and batch editing and make sure I get caught up on personal readings before I allow myself to take time off. And even then, something for you to be aware of, even if you do that, especially if you're using social media, you can't disappear for long stretches of time because you will be completely drowned out by everybody else. So in order to maintain your relevance, you have to keep interacting on social media. So for some people, that's no big deal. They're like, oh, I wanna show off that I'm in Hawaii, <laughs> right? You know, that's fine. But you're still going to have to be working, answering comments, you know, especially again on social media, you have to kind of go through as best as you can and maybe get out some of the nastier comments and things that are just, not helpful to the discussion, that sort of thing. So you're never really getting a chance to rest. And again, your social life will most likely take a hit. I know what a lot of people will say. I don't deal with that. I have, um, well, good for you. 
maybe it's your specific industry, but my industry, again, the spirituality industry, I have tried to go in my town and <laughs> link up with people. But what I found uh, having a social media platform is when I go into these areas, people wanna use me to give them exposure on my YouTube channel. And so it's really hard to formulate any sort of um, mutually beneficial collaborations, uh, that sort of thing. So when the pandemic hit, that for me, I made the most of it, but that really woke me up because now I don't have an out. Like I, I couldn't really go out and just socialize here and there and come home, we couldn't socialize at all. And for me personally, it was really bothering me when people would be like, oh my gosh, this is just the worst thing ever. I can't possibly function like this. Now I'm not trying to diminish anybody out there who went through a hard time, we all did. But it was sort of like, my pain means more than anybody else because I need people. We all need some sort of human interaction, okay? Some more than others. But it was hard on everybody, whether you were used to being at home or not. <laughs> um, and you know, just because I had been isolated for a long time doesn't mean that I didn't suffer through that too. So, you know, I think a lot of us started realizing this isolation thing, if it goes on too long, that could have a real detrimental effect. And for me, it was really starting to drag me down. I, I didn't feel like I was useful to people, you know, this sort of thing. So remember, We've already had it happen once. It's not likely, I hope it doesn't happen again, <laughs> but you know, there could be things that could have you take a hit mentally too. While we're on the pandemic, let's go back to that. Again, if we talk about medical field, uh, you know, the stuff that I mentioned before, you might be having a little bit more stability. But the thing to think about, and I wanna offer this example here, especially if you are a creative type. I, I was having everybody say to me, oh, everybody's home watching YouTube and they're scared, so I bet you are really, you know, overwhelmed with business. No, <laughs> no. What ended up happening, I'm, I'm just guessing here, but my ad revenue, as soon as stuff started getting announced, month by month, it started going down until it got to uh, shutdowns and all that kind of stuff. Then my ad revenue tanked by 90%. 90%, so I can only assume a couple of things probably happened there. Um, and this is another thing that you'll have to know about, you know, what, no matter what kind of business you do, you have to keep up with what's going on in the world, the trends, social media trends, algorithms. <laughs> if you're gonna be a YouTuber, you have to be on top of all of that in addition to everything else, okay? Um, but I think that companies, in order to maintain their people, probably cut their ad budget, I can only guess. And when people thought that people would be rushing to my channel for comfort, that's not what people were doing. People were rushing to the quick hit kind of spiritual channels. This is where trends and watching trends becomes very important. So 2012, I'm in the spiritual realm, okay? Spiritual channel. So in 2012, there was all the talk of the end of the world, we're gonna be sucked up to the mothership or something, I don't know. Um, so people started to become very <laughs> aware of spirituality and it started to become a little mainstream. By 2015, it was trendy. Now that's the death of anything once it becomes trendy because nobody's taking it seriously. We saw this influx of people who read The Secret and now they have a whole channel on law of attraction. And yet all they're talking about is vision boards. They're never going any deeper than that. We also saw a bunch of people take the concept of twin flames and really twist it around so it's like really romantic and very attractive to our third dimensional density consciousness, right? The love story. And I don't think a lot of people even know that that came from Kabbalah and that that's not exactly what that means, right? They just took, they cherry picked some bit of information, twisted it around and then became entertainment from it. Uh, then we started having what I refer to as the hook readings, okay? Uh, which basically, same thing over and over and over, keeping the readings very, very shallow and keeping you wanting to come back. So sometimes really unethical readers, just again, in this example of my business, they will uh, play on people's fears and that's how they drag people in. What I compare that to is people being very hungry and tossing candy to them, 
okay? It's not really going to satisfy them. They might get addicted to it, and then they need to come back for more and more candy, right? Instead of giving them a nourishing meal and teaching them how to cook for themselves, which is what my channel does, <laughs> or at least I aim to do that. So people, and I, I can understand it because especially during the pandemic, um, again, people saying your channel must have been booming. It wasn't uh, because people were, you know, I, I don't think people want to work on traumas and deep spiritual growth when they're living a trauma and trying to survive. So people were going to just, just give me a little bit of comfort. Just give me a quick answer. Just give me, solve my life for me, help me out. Why is, and this was the thing I got during that time. Michelle, why is this happening? Tell me the mystery of the universe. Tell me the mind of God. Well, girl, if I knew that, you're saying I'd be sitting here. <laughs> I don't think I'd be sitting here. I, I don't have the answer. Or again, the quick fix answers, fix my life. Um, and people were going through major things, you know, the, the divorces. Um, I had a lot of, oh God, during this time, again, in my profession, and this is something in your world you might have to deal with if something like this goes on again. You know, tell me when it's going to get better, whether you're a fi finance person or a spiritual person. That's a common question. Tell me when it's going to get better. People wanted me to tell them, you know, what's going to happen with the economy. What's, you know, da, 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 all this stuff. Is it going to, whatever, what natural disasters are going to come up. And then they're on the darker side of those times. I have to be careful what I say here, but S, intervention. Um, People would come to me a lot for that, which I am not trained in. I'm not, I, I just thought I was slinging cards and talking spirituality and people came to me for that. I had one person write to me. She said that she was sick with what was happening and she was going into the hospital and she said, I know I'm not going to come out. I'm not asking for you to pump me up and tell me everything's going to be okay. I know it's not. Can you make me feel okay about dying? That's something I would think that someone would go to a priest for, but people were coming to me. There were other, I don't want to say too much, I got to be careful here, but there were other things where people were in very dangerous situations and they were reaching out to me and then I'm having to help, you know, and I was honored that they thought of me. But if you want to know what it can be like as a solopreneur, you know, you're all by yourself, Okay. Maybe you don't have a psychological, a psychology degree. Maybe you don't have crisis training. The best I could do was keep them stable because obviously they're coming to me because they're, they trust me and get them feeling comfortable to go to proper resources. So there was a lot of that, which brings me to my next point. You could get sued. Okay. You could get sued, especially if you're a spiritual practitioner, you have to make it a constant to say, this is not a replacement for financial advice, medical advice, psychiatric advice. You have to keep saying that. During my personal readings, I'll say that 20 times. It's for their protection too, right? But you have to be very mindful about the kind of advice that you're giving out. Or if you're a coach, if you're not qualified to be giving out psychiatric advice, you can't do it. It's practicing psychiatry without a license. You have to be up on the rules around that for your safety and for the safety of the client. Marketing. You will be doing all of your own marketing if you can't hire someone, <laughs> okay? So if you come to the table, you know, I'm an older YouTuber, so when I went to college, there was no digital marketing class. And marketing in general was something that kids went into when they didn't want to have like a real major. I know, isn't that terrible? And now <laughs> I'm like, dang it, why didn't I take that as a minor? I mean. Ugh, I should have done that. So if you're watching this in your college age, study digital marketing, even if it's as a minor, make sure you fit that in somewhere, okay? Because you're gonna need it, at least for the time being. So I'm in the game and I have to stay on top of, again, what's happening on the platforms that I use, but also making sure that I don't get drowned out as, as channels become more and more plentiful, making sure that my work is still standing out and still being in my integrity, which is proving to be very difficult. I always stay in my integrity, but I really think it shows the state of the world when, I mean, even if let's say you're a psychologist, don't you get bothered by some of these um, very 
mainstream high production companies that are oversimplifying certain diseases and certain um, illnesses and disorders and all of that. And those same big production channels are also commenting on spiritual concepts. Five ways to know that you're with your twin flame. Who's behind the scenes being the expert? What are your qualifications for that? <laughs> like, I don't know. But that, that's what you're in there doing. And so you really need to make sure that not only do you know how to set everything up for your digital marketing, but marketing is going to be a constant. It's going to be a constant. Then you're going to get feedback from your audience. At least at this time, my audience hates email marketing. I tried it. I was putting all this work into these beautiful images and putting all this stuff together. And ooh, I'd get nasty emails. <laughs> Again, it's a spiritual community that does encompass some people who, you know, they don't like the mainstream stuff. So the mainstream approaches you take, they are suspicious of it and, and all that. So I stopped the email marketing. I was like, I'm, I'm not paying to have all this going. Um, that's the other thing too. You're going to have to have subscriptions all over the place, the music. And again, if you have YouTube or something like that, but you're going to have to, it's like everybody has to know how to use a camera these days. There's kind of no way around it. And you have to know how to sort of sell yourself. So it comes down to whoever has the most charisma is going to have the most presence in combination with the digital marketing. People who tend to have the most charisma, who do you think they are? They think, you think they're the shy people? No. They're just, who knows what they got going on. <laughs> uh, maybe a cluster B personality disorder, who knows? Not an expert in that area, check with an expert. Uh, but, you know, it's sad because a lot of people who are extremely talented or have a lot to offer, just because they're not the ones going, hey, bah, you know, doing some funny thing that is become like their bit, right? Or they're not willing to lower their integrity to cheapen what they're doing. They may get overlooked. So again, I've had people audit my YouTube channel and come back and go, I don't know, you're pretty much doing everything that you possibly can except doing the cheap candy readings, the hook readings. That's the only thing that I'm not doing, <laughs> right? So there will be that. You'll get the advice to make sure you have three months living expenses. <laughs> I had three months living expenses. Pandemic lasted two years. Good luck with that. Finally, it's just, just to give you the bottom line here, it is a constant hustle. It is a constant hustle. And you have to be willing to get comfortable with instability. And I think that's the biggest takeaway here. Get comfortable with instability. At some point, especially if you're a creative type, because in this world, creatives don't usually make as much money as people who uh, follow you know, the formula for a business consultant or something like that. We often don't get compensated very well. And sometimes what we do gets very undervalued. If you're a freelance writer, you understand. People wanna pay you pennies to help their business. Or if you are a website designer, you know people, it's like an afterthought. It's like, oh, just hire, hire a guy or a gal to come on in here and take care of this, whatever. You know, that's the attitude, right? And when they find out you wanna charge what you're worth, that's the other thing, make sure you're charging what you're worth. But you know, people are gonna be like balk at that and have a problem with it because you know, they're like, you're just an accessory to my bottom line. I don't really care what you're doing or how you do it, just make it happen, right? So you're gonna be having a lot of that. So it's a constant hustle to keep finding work and to stay relevant while still maintaining your integrity. At some point you're gonna have debt. If you're somebody who's like, oh, I, I know, I, I don't like having debt. At some point you're going to have debt because you can only do what you can do. You know, like you can't pay your bills until you get paid. And if people aren't paying you, and again, depending on your type of business, you'll have to see what invoicing looks like. For me as a spiritual practitioner, you know, I don't do anybody's personal reading service until I have the payment. And um, that's it, <laughs> that's the policy. You have to make sure you have your disclaimers, your policies up, but at the end of the day, your life is going to look very, very, very different. While your friends are out at happy hour because they just got off of work at five, you might work until midnight. 
Maybe you can't meet them for happy hour because you know darn well if you go, you're not going to get any work done. Um, you know, you'll have to pay for your own health insurance if you're in the United States and that is not cheap. Yes, there's some help out there, but you'll have to factor that in. And there are things, like I say, that you have to pay for like subscription services and, um, you know, copyrighted clips and all kinds of stuff. Then you can be doing your best to go along, go along. And now you got some, some notice from YouTube saying you had a broken affiliate link. This actually happened to me. You have a broken affiliate link in your description warning on your channel for the life of your channel. And if you get like, I don't know how many more strikes it is, they're gonna take your channel down and take your livelihood. That's a panic inducing kind of moment, especially if this is your livelihood or if it's a big part of advertising what you do in this world. And it was for nothing. That was something that a simple email would have had me going in there and removing it. And what's more, I went back to, cause see, I, I test all the links before I put them up. Is it possible I forgot to test this link before I put it in? Yeah, I guess everyone can make a mistake, but that's not like me. So probably I got that link from this affiliate that I was working with. I put it in there and somewhere along the line, they did something on their end that broke the link. Well, this was an old video, so I wasn't checking on it. You gotta be careful if you're gonna be on social media and using links, they on their end could do something and then it comes back on you. And when I went to them and I said, what the heck happened? They played victim I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're blaming us. Oh my God, you know? And I, I broke that relationship off right then and there because they only cared about themselves, <laughs> all right? So affiliate marketing, that, that goes down a whole other thing. If you're interested in that, I can make another video around that. Or if you have more questions about what it is to be a freelancer, to be doing this kind of stuff on your own, especially when it comes to social media, of course, every business is gonna need social media. Leave your comments down below. If there are enough questions, I can make a whole other video but let me know. I hope this video helped you out a little bit. We really do need to form our own little community here. So leave your comments down below. If I can answer questions, if you want a whole other video on something else, ask away. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. That's the thing that you got to do on YouTube. You have to do the call to action at the end. <laughs> you hear it all the time. That's what it is. All right. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.